I'm going to use this two-step synthetic route to ask some typical questions that would be asked in an exam question and then following that we'll look at a calculation based on this synthetic route. So we've got ethene ultimately being converted to ethanoic acid via those two steps. So first of all, reagents and conditions for each step the type of reaction and observations, if there are any. So have a go, pause the video, and then I'll go through the answer. So step one is an example of a hydration reaction, and the conditions for that reaction are that the water must be in its steam form. So you can see I've added a G state symbol next to the water. To get water into steam, the temperature must be over 100 degrees Celsius, and you also need a phosphoric acid catalyst. Step two is the oxidation of the alcohol, the ethanol. We're going to completely oxidize this. Remember, primary alcohols can be oxidized twice. First of all, to an aldehyde. Second of all, to a carboxylic acid. So we need two moles of the oxidizing agent. The oxidizing agent itself is acidified potassium dichromate and that would need to be carried out under reflux to make sure you get both oxidations. And color changes or observations, only one, and that's in step two, orange to green. Remember this chemical's orange, when it reacts, it goes green. So here's the calculation. A chemical engineer needed to make 500 grams of ethanoic acid the percentage yield of the route is typically 43.6%. Calculate the mass of ethene required. So if you want to have a go yourselves at that, pause the video and then play on and I'll go through the answer. So I've just put on the board there the information that we know from the question. We need to make, or the chemical engineer needs to make 500 grams of acid and the yield is 43.6% how much ethene is the chemical engineer going to need so the first thing we should do is work out how many moles of ethanoic acid we need to make so moles equals mass over MR the MR of the ethanoic acid is 60 so 500 divided by 60 is 8.33 the moles of ethene we would need, assuming it was 100% yield, would be the same. And that's because there's a 1 to 1 ratio running right through this synthetic route. So we know that we need to make 8.33 moles of carboxylic acid. So we would need to use 8.33 moles of alcohol. That's created in step 1. And so you can see from the mole ratio, it all goes back to an identical number of moles of ethane at the very start. Now, before I factor in the actual yield of 43.6%, I just want to make the maths a bit more understandable for people. So let's suppose the yield was 50%. So not 43.6, but 50 so we now know that to create 8.33 moles of carboxylic acid with 100% yield, we'd need 8.33 moles of ethene. If it was a 50% yield, we would need double the moles of ethene. So where's that two come from, that doubling? It's the moles we need divided by the actual yield multiplied by 100. So if we cancel down, we get that 2 there. So that's why we need to double the moles to factor in the 50% yield. And obviously that would give us 16.66 moles. And there's the actual number of moles that we're going to need, factoring in the 43.6% yield. So we can see it's slightly more than 16.66 moles because the yield's a little bit lower than 50%. So hopefully using the 50% yields helped people get their heads around what we've done here. So all we're doing is dividing by the percentage yield and then scaling up to 100 
to work out how much we're going to need when we factor in the yield. Now we can do the final step. The mass of ethene required is the moles multiplied by the MR and that comes out at 534.8 grams to one decimal place.